just woke up in the morning and there it was. And so there's, have you called anybody or is we there anybody no to call? Idea. We have no idea who to call or where it's, where it came from, how it got there. Okay, well, it may not stay there much longer. Yeah, I know. It's getting pretty bad out here now. It sure is. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as far as the boat is concerned, well, if it's your boat, you need to get down here and do something about it because it's a beautiful boat, but it may not be that way for much longer. It's clearly in big trouble. At Carmel Cafero, 7 News. And as always, we always ask our viewers, when you see news happen, if you can, send it to us. Today's certainly a day where there's a lot happening. We love your videos. We love your pictures. Diana Diaz is standing by at the news desk with some of these wonderful viewer pictures. Diana? That's right. I mean, for the most part, I hope you're indoors. But if you have to head out for any reason, well, we've been getting some of those viewer pictures. The first one, this a tree down in Little Havana. This person having to go out to try to survey the damage there caused by this tree down as a result of the strong winds that have blown through this morning. Uh, I know of another picture here that is even worse than that one. Imagine this. You're the owner of this boat, a partially submerged boat. This in Lauderdale by the sea. We saw Carmel there with one boat tipped over and this one also going under. Feel badly for the owner there. And we're getting another picture into the newsplex. And this one of another tree down in another area of Little Havana there. It's unclear if it affected the power lines. We have gotten reports of some power outages. FPL working to restore power to all residents of Miami-Dade and Broward County. And a reminder, if you see news happening when you're in your home or maybe have to go outside because you hear that noise and you see that tree go down, take a picture, snap it. If you can do so safely, send it to us. And you may see it on our air. Send it to 7 at WSVN.com. Live in the Plex, I'm Diana Diaz. I'll see you back here in a couple. All right, Diana, these live pictures now out of Dania Beach. Isaac's effects clearly being felt across South Florida. And as a result, a lot of people in Dade and Broward have lost power. We know that 3,400 homes are without power in Dade County right now. I should also mention that they've already restored power to about 5,900 in that same county. As far as Dade is concerned, as far as Broward is concerned, I should say 1,500 without power as of this morning, about 2,900 there already restored. And now the problem comes with safety because a lot of times when people lose power, they want to take the party outside, you know, the mm -hmm. storm party. They start to use gas and barbecues and whatnot. As we heard earlier from officials from the city of Miami, safety is the most important thing. If you're going to use anything with gas, keep it in a well-ventilated area. Don't put it next to anything that is flammable. And of course, if you can stay inside, if you do have power, of course, you want to watch us. We'll get you through the storm. But right now really is the best to stay indoors. As you continue looking at these live pictures out of Dania Beach, we have seen these really heavy bands, the outer bands bringing in lots of rain and lots of wind. As you can see, the trees there, not a pretty picture outside. And in just a few hours, we're going to get the center of the storm hitting the keys, which means more bad weather is on the way. Let's get right now to Alex DePrado. He's in Key West. Uh, yeah, we are here in Key West off of Green Street and there is a squall that is coming through right now. You can see that the, that the seas here have picked up. We're actually in a sheltered area not out uh not in this is a sheltered area so these waves are a lot a lot less high than they would be out further so it just goes to give you a sense of this storm as it moves closer to the keys if we pan up a little bit you can see the clouds how fast they're moving through with these clouds is coming rain we are seeing a very uh a, a pelting rain right now dousing us here in this area. Let's turn around. We can show you the palm trees and this hotel here. And uh, you see, you may be able to see that uh, there are boats out here. Most of them have been taken in, but a short time ago, we did see a rescue that was performed with one boat. Uh, it had to be brought in by a tow boat because there was some sort of issue with a sailboat that was brought into a marina, but this squall is really moving through. And with this is coming a very, very high wind. This hotel next to us is boarded up. There are a couple of people outside, but the rain stings. And if, you, if you're close to the sand here, that stings as well. The situation here in Key West is deteriorating very fast. We'll throw it back to you guys at the station. 
All right, Alex Soprato in Key West. Thank you very much. For the last couple of hours now, we've really seen the strength of this storm. As you can see, the conditions out there live in Dania Beach. Seven's Vanessa Medina is back there live with an update for us. Vanessa? That's right, guys. We knew it was coming, and here it is. Of course, the winds really picking up. We've got some uh, birds that are even hiding. It's so strong that birds are hiding under the pier here. I don't even know if if Johnny can see them from that angle, but the wind is really strong now and we've got this hard rain that it hurts as it hits your body. You know, we've been standing out here and it's been progressively, uh, it goes up and down and then now we are probably in the worst band that we've had since we've been out here this morning. Just the hard rain. I mean, he's, <laughs> poor Johnny, if you can see my photographer, he's standing there holding the side of his face and the other hand has the camera because it just really hurts to stand out here and um, and get pelted by this rain. But we saw Derek go through that through, through the same thing. And then we saw Steve Shapiro go through this and they said it was just painful. And that's exactly what we're going through now. But again, you know, Hollywood telling people they have sandbags for residents. If this rain is going to continue four to 10 inches expected here, you can see the palm trees. They're just uh, almost completely uh, the palm fronds completely turned to their sides as this squall comes through and we deal with this one again for the next few hours. This is exactly what we'll be going through. But poor Johnny, he's got his face completely covered. But now if you can see this way, check out the water. I mean, we've got some pretty rough seas. Phil Farrow was talking about the storm surge, about one to three feet storm surge. But if you even try to walk in it, you can see just how powerful the wind and the water is here in Dania Beach. It has progressively picked up, you know, when we first came out out four in the morning we didn't have much rain and then slowly as the day's progressing we are starting to see Isaac's ugly side where just the big concern out here is the possibility for tornadoes because uh, being on this ugly side of Isaac that's what we could possibly get so we'll keep you posted we'll try and stay dry which is impossible but we'll uh, be back out here in a few to bring you the latest for now reporting live in Dania Beach Vanessa Medina 7 News. All right, Vanessa, thank you. And this is the reason why officials have been telling you all morning long, stay off the roads. Right now, you're looking at a picture at uh, I-95 right now. This is Northwest at 119th Street. You can see clearly there's an accident there. But again, the message is clear. It's not a good day to be out on the roads for any reason. You should stay indoors no matter what. This is what happens. Exactly. Another reason, the situation, the down traffic lights. With more on that, Ralph Rayburn. Ominous skies, a lot of uh, rain and wind have been through this area. You're looking at the intersection of 79th Street and Northeast 10th Avenue. Vehicles going through that intersection. There is no power in this area. It's been out since about 6 a.m. You can see right here that both of these traffic control devices, both in the east and west and north and south directions are out. And of course, the rule is if you see this, if you see the lights out, you want to treat this intersection as if there were a stop sign on all four corners and give the other drivers the right of way again. The situation is going to be played out a lot more as the storm moves through. So you want to be very, very careful on the roadways. The best bet is if you don't need to be out here, stay home. That's our story here on the ground in Miami. I'm Ralph Raven reporting for 7 News. And let's go back to the Keys now, taking you to Key Largo. There is 7's Adriana Hopkins for us with an update, Adriana. Absolutely. So that last squall just ended, but I want to take you out here just to get a view of the north. You can see very, very dark and we're waiting for this next outer band to just come on through. They've been fairly consistent here as we've gone later throughout the day. We're waiting for more heavy rain, more strong winds. That's really what we've been dealing with. And now we're at the point where the winds are so strong, you really have to brace yourself when you get a good, strong gust of wind. Before I was able to just stand still, not really worry about too much. Uh, now I'm worried it might blow away. Much different scene here right now than it was a few hours ago. Again, we're waiting for this wall of rain to come through. What you can't see is the uh, back side of the my photographer. He's showing you the north side, the south side, much, much lighter. The sky over here to the north, much, much darker. And that's how we're telling when these outer bands come. That's how we're kind of bracing ourselves and waiting for them to move through. 
just by looking at the sky as if you would if it was any other overcast or rainy day, but really waiting for this next band of rain to come through. And of course, once it does, we'll bring you those pictures live. Reporting now in Key Largo, Adriana Hopkins, back to you. Hi, Adriana. This is uh, Chief Meteorologist Phil Farrow back at the station. We're took, taking a quick look at the radar to see exactly what you're talking about. There's a lot of rain to your north that is starting to move in. Uh, it is going to be pretty nasty over the next 30 to 45 minutes. What about the wind? Has that picked up any? And, and what about the, the storm surge? Has that begun yet? Uh, absolutely. I want to show you my stance here. I've got the wide leg stance bracing myself because as I said, these wind gusts are really getting much stronger now. You can see this one as it's blowing through much, much stronger. You really uh, my camera's a little shaky because my photographer's being blown back. But Phil, you mentioned that you can see on the radar to the north, we've got the rain moving through. This is the north. This is what we're waiting for. As you can see, the sky much, much darker. The rain coming through. I can see that the lens of this camera is getting uh, pelted with rain right now, so I'm not sure how clear your shot is. But yeah, what you're seeing on the radar, that's exactly what I'm watching as it happens out here live. All right, thank you very much. Let's go down now into, the, uh, I believe, Marathon, where you, we have uh, Eugene Ramirez standing by live. Uh, strong, dusty winds as well there for you. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Phil. You know, I just did uh, some readings of the wind here, and we got readings up to 26 miles per hour here in uh, Marathon. So the Middle Keys now seeing some of these bands come through, not only with uh, high winds, but also with lots of rain. As a matter of fact, it's the most rain, uh, most rainfall that I've seen all morning out here, and I've been out since 4 a.m. This is about as bad as it's gotten so far, and you can also see how that's affecting here the Gulf of Mexico. Really choppy here. You could see some of the white caps uh, as the water is being brought uh, ashore, and you can also take a look here at the buoys. These buoys separate the open golf from the beach that I'm standing at right now. Uh, and you can see them there. That kind of gives you a better idea of how rough it's beginning to get here um, in a marathon. Now, I also want to point out some damage, very minimal, but damage nonetheless. Over here, this palm tree right above me, you can see that two of the palm fronds, uh, one of them looks like it's uh, hanging and uh, probably fall down within uh, the next few hours or so. We continue to get winds like this and a little further up, one of them looks like it's snapped, um, just taking a beating from all the wind here. Uh, this wind is one of the reasons some of the, the uh, uh, maintenance uh, keepers here at this resort that we're at uh, have flipped these chairs upside down. That's so the wind goes through them and doesn't lift them and, and send them uh, flying. But again, uh, this is the most wind we've seen uh, in the most rain we've seen now 26 mile per hour uh, winds the last reading that I got and if we take another reading right now as I have a gust coming at me uh, 22 uh, miles per hour so again you know the winds come at different times and at different speeds but again uh, Phil as you've been telling us uh, these bands come and go right now it looks like the middle keys is getting hit by one of them all right thank you very much that's Eugene Ramirez reporting live from Marathon let's take a look at the very latest here regarding tropical storm uh, Isaac Gusty winds and rain just about everywhere. A tornado watch is in effect for South Florida. And we expect landfall uh, from uh, Isaac across the Keys around 3 p.m. this afternoon. That is the actual center, the core, going over the Keys. As you can see, we are already being impacted by those outer bands. Here's the tornado watch from uh, Lake Okeechobee south in through Key West. That will remain in effect until 5 p.m. This is the storm tracker radar. You can see all the rain moving through. Center of circulation is right about here. You can see that push of rain moving in. We're getting gusty winds everywhere from Marathon through the upper keys right along the coast, as well as Broward County. This is going to last here about another hour, maybe 90 minutes. Then things will subside until we get the push of Isaac into the Gulf of Mexico. Then we're going to get the backside later on tonight with a repeat performance. So more heavy rain and strong gusty winds. Flood watch in effect. We are looking at the possibility of heavy rain, maybe four to eight inches by the time it's all said and done. As of 11 a.m., 65 mile an hour winds at that time, 80 miles away from Key West. There is the center, but you can see that most of the cloud cover and the rain is right to the north. That's what's swinging our way. That's, that's what has been impacting us and what we will expect later on tonight. 39 mile per hour wind gusts right now in Fort Lauderdale, 35 in Marathon, Palm Beach, 36, 31 in Miccosukee, 39 in Fort Lauderdale, 28 in Miami. 
Let's take a quick view here at the buoy data. This is live information coming in. Virginia Key, 34, 38 at Fowey Rock. Down the coast here as we move in through the upper keys, 43 miles per hour at Molasses Reef, Long Key, 29, and Sombrero Key, 36 miles per hour. Vodka Key right here, very close uh, to Marathon, a 28 mile per hour reading. A lot of advisory still in place, obviously right here, hurricane warnings due to the approach. There is a chance, a slight chance, that this system could become a hurricane before making landfall. Just about every place else throughout the state is under a tropical storm warning or watch. We know where it is headed. The question is going to be how strong will it be once it gets there. And now it looks like the center will probably go right over Key West and make its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Once there, there is a chance that it could grow stronger. Look how wide that wind field is. This is about 100, 150 miles in every direction so you're in the path of the storm regardless of where you're at you will feel the effects of this system as far as the uh, large view the forecast cone is concerned well it looks like down the road it could be a major worry for new orleans louisiana it could move in as a category two system that is the very latest here as far as tropical storm isaac is concerned let's send it back to the desk all right, Phil, thank you. And this picture right now near Little Havana, this is Southwest 22nd Avenue and 11th Terrace. And this is, Diana, the reason why Miami-Dade County officials said yesterday, you know, we don't know exactly what we'll be looking at as far as cleanup is concerned, but we know that Monday, our day is going to consist primarily of that cleanup. And that's this is right. what they're talking about. And that's why schools were closed. You know, for some of you may think, oh, well, you know, after this blows through if there wasn't a, a lot of damage per se to buildings well thank goodness but you're going to see a lot of this and they have time then on monday to clean all this up before the students get back to school and so a good call by officials in miami-dade broward and monroe counties and part of the reason now is the conditions are really picking up they've uh, really improved uh, in terms of coming and going you see a squall coming through one minute and then the next minute another break in the weather. We've seen that throughout the day all across South Florida. Dania Beach is one of those areas. Vanessa Medina thought she dodged a bullet not heading down to the Keys, but that's not the case. She's been getting pounded all day. And right now she <laughs> is seeing another squall move through. Right, Vanessa? <laughs> that's right. You know, I thought I did dodge a bullet. However, of course, I'm right smack in the middle of it. Knee deep right now in it. You know, we didn't know exactly what Isaac was going to bring knowing that he was going to just go over the keys and we felt that we had we, we were breathing a little uh, easier knowing that we weren't going to get the brunt of it however we are still in a tropical storm and we are definitely feeling it out here and take a look at it out there I mean you see the white water and the pier just getting banged up all day for hours since about four o'clock this morning since we've been out. I mean, this is what we've been seeing, white water. We saw some surfers attempt to go out and uh, thinking that they could beat this and go out there and catch some waves. However, that was not the case. So, you know, what they're telling people here in Broward County, stay indoors. There's no reason to go outside in this. You know, if you have a truck, they say it's dangerous to be out in these conditions, especially these, these high vehicles. So they're asking everyone to stay inside bring in anything that could be a projectile in your home. Again, you can see the wind is definitely picked up out here and uh, and it will continue to be this way for the next uh, several hours into the evening. So we're not seeing, we're just seeing the beginning of Isaac out here. And as if I walk a little further, I mean, if we see uh, just to look under this pier here, you can just see uh, the water and, it, you know, Phil talked about the storm surge coming in about one to three feet and we've definitely seen that progress throughout the day and that will definitely progress as the evening uh, comes upon us. So of course we'll bring you the very latest, but that's the very latest out here in Dania Beach for now reporting live back to you guys. All right, Vanessa, and don't be deceived if you do get a break wherever you are in the weather, because then it comes right back at you. Look at Steve, he's dry for the moment. Are you talking to me? I am talking. Are you, to you talking Steve? to me? You're not getting rained on <laughs> for a minute. No, we have a little. We have a little yeah. bit of a break. Although I was just, I was just kind of squeezing out our mic flag here, you know. 
from the rain. No, we've got a little bit of a break. It was blowing a lot harder. It was certainly raining very, very hard about a half hour ago. And as Phil has been telling us, it's on again, off again with the squalls. Right now, it's blowing, but not nearly as hard as it has been here on Hallover Beach. Are you looking for me? Are you looking for me? No. You're not looking for me? That's good. <laughs> That's really good. Anyway, oh, now it's starting to kick up. The police arrived and now it's really starting to fire up here. Anyway, we've been here all day. Look at the birds out here enjoying this weather. It's a great day for ducks and pelicans, no? Anyway, Phil keeps talking about the surge. We haven't really seen the, uh, the, the uh, ocean creeping up on the, on the uh, sand yet, but the swells are certainly up about 8 or 12 feet, that's for sure. Now the winds are starting to kick up again. People are actually out here, and not only the birds, but people out here enjoying what, what the storm brings, and that specifically is the surfers, and we've showed you the surfers um, throughout the morning. The police have been monitoring them, making sure that they're safe, but there are a lot of people out on surfboards. This is behind Bell Harbor, and... Uh, <coughs> And it, so far, there's been no accidents, thank goodness, but people have been out here. Whoa, did you see that guy? Did we just see that guy take off? <laughs> Some guy just went way up in the air on a surfboard. Crazy stuff out here. All right, it is starting to kick up here a little bit. I hope everybody's staying safe. If you can stay at home, do so. This is not fun. Look what it's doing to my hair. I'll be here if you need me. Steve Shapiro live on Hallover Beach, back inside. Steve has apparently been drinking the salt water. Not good. All right, Steve. And now we're taking a look at Miami Beach. The conditions much of the same right now across South Florida. Isaac already starting to leave his mark. And from Miami Beach, we're going to take you back to the Keys and Key Largo. Already some downed wires out there. Seven's Brandon Beyer has more. We're on the ocean side of US-1 near mile marker 96 in Key Largo. We're driving around some of these neighborhoods uh, trying to see what, if any, damage this storm is causing at this point. So far, this is what we've been able to find. Now, this isn't a power line down. Uh, it appears to be a cable line. But you can see the, the wind starting to knock some things uh, around just a bit. As we take a, uh, a look behind me here, you will see some, uh, some ch very choppy ocean, uh, heavy rain, heavy windfall right now coming from the ocean side of Key Largo. All right, that was Brandon Byer there and live pictures now out of Little Havana where the rain has subsided. It improved a little bit, but you can tell what happened not, sh not a long time ago. This tree has come down as a result and Ralph Rayburn is on the ground there to tell us some more, Ralph. Well, you can answer the question for me here. If a uh, tree falls in the middle of 22nd Avenue and What's this, Southwest 11th Terrace? Does it make any noise? Well, I can tell you that the people that live in this house just told me that it did. Uh, they heard a large crack when the wind had picked up a little bit earlier, and they looked out front, and actually the tree was hanging from this uh, cable here. It's, I guess it's a uh, communication cable there up on that, uh, on that pole, but uh, it hung up there for a while. You can see a couple of leaves still up there, but then it came down, and it's a pretty big around. It's probably uh, 14 or 15 inches in diameter, a clean break here. So let's report the first tree down that we spotted in Little Havana. That's what we've got for you ladies right now as the wind starts to pick up again, not too bad, but uh, but the tree is down, it's in the roadway. No one's out here to clean it up. And uh, we'll just give you one more look from the other side here. And you can see that uh, it is blocking the roadway here somewhat there. There's a good shot of the, uh, of the base of the tree right there, but uh, it's down and uh, we haven't seen any crews out here to clean it up at, uh, so far. That's our story here on the ground, both feet on the ground for Ralph Rayburn today for WSCM. All right, Ralph, and that's why it's best to just stay indoors if you can. A tornado watch is in effect until 5 p.m. because it comes and it goes, Christine, and check this out. Wow, look at this picture. This is out of Lighthouse Point, and again, this is what tropical storm force winds do. They bring down trees, and if your house happens to be in the wrong place, that's what happened here. This is a picture that was sent to us, or a couple of them, uh, one of our viewers, they send it to Seven, and as always, we remind you, you know, you're our eyes and ears as well. If you see any pictures that are worthy of sending in, basically, look at all this damage, even to the tile on the roof there of that house. Here's the address. You can send it to seven at WSVN.com. But most importantly here, we do want to remind you that only do so if you can do so safely. And we'll be right back.
Florida Assisted Living Coalition, a free source for senior placement, assisted living, Alzheimer's and Parkinson care, physical therapy options, and doctors who make house calls. Call 800-939-2650 to learn more about long-term care. Disney on Ice presents World of Fantasy. Sea stars from Cars, The Little Mermaid, Toy Story, Tinkerbell, and the Disney Fairies. Playing the Bank Atlantic Center September 6th through 9th and American Airlines Arena September 13th through 16th. Get your tickets today. All Year Cooling is giving away air conditioning systems. That's right, giving away. Have a new Reem AC installed by September 21st. And if the temperature reaches 96 degrees or higher on October 1st, everyone receives their AC system for free. Visit HopeIt'sHot.com or call 888-770-9580. You can choose to take your chances. Or you can choose the Infinity JX, the only luxury crossover in the world that can sense what's behind you even when you can't and can apply the brakes even before you do. The all-new Infiniti JX, the backup collision intervention system. For exceptional offers on the Infiniti JX, visit your local Infiniti retailer now. Infiniti, inspired performance. All Year Cooling is giving away air conditioning systems. That's right, giving away. Have a new Reem AC installed by September 21st. And if the temperature reaches 96 degrees or higher on October 1st, everyone receives their AC system for free. Visit HopeIt'sHot.com or call 888-770-9580. Disney on Ice presents World of Fantasy. Sea stars from Cars, The Little Mermaid, Toy Story, Tinkerbell, and the Disney Fairies. Playing the Bank Atlantic Center September 6th through 9th and American Airlines Arena September 13th through 16th. Get your tickets today. Are you a surviving spouse of a veteran, married to a veteran, a disabled child of a veteran, or a veteran yourself? Over 22 billion in veterans' pensions are unclaimed. Financial benefits could be due to you. Call 1-800-939-2650 to learn how to receive your monthly entitlement. All right, here's the very latest on uh, Tropical Storm uh, Isaac. Gusty winds and rain all across South Florida. A tornado watch in effect, uh, basically from Lake Okeechobee South. And we expect landfall around the lower Florida Keys sometime around 3 p.m. But we are already feeling the effects of just about everywhere from Isaac. Here's that tornado watch uh, from uh, around uh, Fort Myers and Palm Beach, south through Key West. That'll remain in effect until 5 p.m. this afternoon. This is a great view of that center of circulation, the eye of the storm, and here it is. Now, this right here is what we are looking at as far as making landfall somewhere across the lower Florida Keys around 3 p.m. And we've got feeder bands to the south, feeder bands to the north that's what's impacting us now now once it makes its way into the gulf of mexico we're going to start to see these bands make their way around the area and that could be impacting us later on this evening but right now a lot of heavy rain moving in across the keys Marathon, Upper Matacumbe, Key Largo, into Miami-Dade we go. Also, pockets of heavy rain starting to move in right now across Palmetto Bay, Cutler Bay, downtown Miami, some light to moderate rain, uh, light drizzle right now from Miami, in through the uh, county line for Broward, but check out Broward County. We have a strong line of thunderstorms moving in along the coast all the way back in through 595, Pembroke Pines, in through I-75, and this will be on the increase for about another hour or so. Then everything will quiet down, and then later on this evening, we will get the backside feeder bands, so we're not done yet. Plenty of rain is expected. A flood watch is in effect. Uh, until 8 p.m., we could see about 4 to 8 inches of rain. As of 11 a.m., 65 mile per hour winds moving west-northwest at 18. The actual center somewhere around uh, 80 miles southeast of Key West, Florida. Now, the wind has been a big factor today. Wind gusts have been reported as strong as uh, 50, 51 miles per hour. Right now, double digits everywhere, 41 in Fort Lauderdale, Marathon, 38. As far as Pembroke Pines goes, 45 right now. That is pretty strong. Kendall, 32, 41 in Fort Lauderdale. Here are the uh, buoys reporting this afternoon. Uh, pretty strong, especially offshore. 32 mile per hour winds at Virginia Key. Fowey Rocks, 38. As we move in through the upper keys, Molasses Reef, 43. 29 in Long Key. Alvaca uh, Key, very close to Marathon, 29 miles per hour in Sombrero Key, reporting a wind gust of 36 miles per hour. Undoubtedly, this is where the center of the storm is going to go. 
slight chance that it could get stronger, maybe move in as a category one system. That's why this entire area is under a hurricane warning. Everyone else here in the area shaded blue and green under tropical storm warnings or watches. Uh, we want to go out live now to Alex DePrado, who's out in Key West. You are awaiting uh, the arrival of barely gets to leave and that is chief meteorologist phil farrow who's got uh, the latest on isaac for us now hey phil how you doing hey not not bad <laughs> good afternoon everyone uh this is a great view of the center of circulation of tropical storm isaac sitting right here there is key west you can see those feeder bands moving across the mainland now we are looking at about another hour or so of strong gusty winds and heavy rain uh, for the keys miami dade and broward but there's more activity to the south we will get those southern rain bands later on this evening so after this one goes through i think things will improve for the next few hours until this one comes ashore however for key west uh, it looks like it's going to be at least another hour or two uh, before things start to improve for you. As a matter of fact, uh, as of last, uh, at the last advisory, it appears that the actual center would make landfall across the lower Florida Keys sometime around 3 p.m. As of 11 a.m., it was just uh, 80 miles southeast of Key West, moving at around 20 miles per hour. Uh, so that's why we are looking at about a roughly 3 p.m. landfall that we're talking here about the actual center of circulation. The wind speeds have been all over the place today. Right now, wind gusts of 36 miles per hour in Fort Lauderdale, uh, Miami 35. Check out Marathon 44 in the 30s as well throughout Fort Myers and Naples. A 44 mile per hour wind gust across Miccosukee, uh, 30 in Hialeah. That's well inland. Uh, the coastal waters. Uh, reporting a wind gust at 32 miles per hour, Virginia Key, Fowey Rock, 38. As a matter of fact, Fowey Rock had a 52 mile per hour wind gust about an hour ago. Molasses Reef, 43, 29 in Long Key and at Vaca Key, uh, right there by Marathon, 32 miles per hour, a little farther offshore, 36 miles per hour. Now, as that uh, landfall is imminent right across the lower Florida Keys, this entire area remains under a hurricane warning. That's because at any time we could see one of those gusts strong enough uh, to reach hurricane force winds. Everyone else here in the uh, green and the blue under tropical storm warnings and watches. And that extends as far north as northern Florida. This is the very latest as far as the cone is concerned. We know where it is headed. The only question will be is how strong it will get. Right now, there's only a 10 uh, mile per hour difference between a strong tropical storm and a weak hurricane. After it passes through Key West, it will continue into the Gulf of Mexico, where it has a chance to grow even stronger. Now, this wind field that is approaching South Florida is extremely large. There is the center. Those tropical storm force winds extend all the way north and through Palm Beach County. That's what we will be dealing with over the next few hours. All right, let's uh, check out now. Uh, I believe we do have a live shot down in Key West with Kevin Ozebeck, who's going to bring us the very latest as to what is happening right now. Well, Phil, uh, the winds here are intensifying and intensifying very quickly, easily. The winds are gusting now at 30 to 40 miles per hour. Of course, Key West is surrounded by water. On one side, you have the Atlantic Ocean. On the other side, you have the Gulf of Mexico. We're on the Gulf side right now, and it may be kind of hard to see because it's raining now so hard, but out there in the Gulf are dozens and dozens of boats. The owners took them out there to open water. They dropped anchor and made sure there is plenty of slack. The reason they left so much slack is because when Isaac comes through here, the water will be rising and they leave all that slack so their boats can rise with the water. Of course, that is their method. Uh, help make sure their boats survive this storm. Right now, people are out here checking out the beaches, seeing what the conditions are like, because pretty soon everyone here will have to go inside. Monroe County emergency planners say, please, please, please stay inside today. When the worst of the storm is here, do not try to venture out. And if you are here in Key West on vacation, at this point, you have to stay here. It is no longer safe to leave. No longer get in your car and travel up the intercoastal highway. It just simply right now at this point is not safe. Of course, when you come to Key West, one of the places you will likely go is Duval Street. Uh, we took a walk there this morning and obviously it's just as windy over on Duval Street as it is here 
at the beach. If you take a walk down Duval Street today, be prepared to deal with some wind. It's pretty gusty out there. You can see right now, some places like this business right here haven't even boarded up yet, even though we're just a few hours away from the storm. But if you look across the street, many of the businesses, the bars, the restaurants do have their hurricane shutters up. There are still some people walking around. This is a Sunday uh, morning after all, and many vacationers are still here in Key West. So they're just kind of out checking to see what it looks like before Isaac hits. You can see we're right outside of another business right here. This one doesn't use shutters, but uses the big pieces of wood to protect their windows. And now we are walking up to what's called the whistle bar, one of the many bars here on Duval Street. And you can see some of the shutters are down, but the bar is actually open. There are people inside and uh, having a drink before uh, Isaac hits. And back out here live just to give you a sense of how strong the winds are now. Take a look at that. That is a piece of a bumper on a dock. They're installed on the sides of docks to keep boats from ramming into the concrete. Well, clearly this piece fell off and floated to where, where we are right now. As you said, people are uh, people are out right now checking the storm out for themselves, but we'll say it again. Monroe County emergency planners say, please do not do this. This really is a day just for everybody to stay inside. Let's send it back to you guys in Miami. All right, well, you just saw Kevin Ozebeck there uh, reporting live from Key West and not too bad, but conditions will go downhill in about another 30 to 40 minutes because of this. That's that one last feeder band that will be moving through. A lot of heavy rain, strong gusty winds right now across Marathon and the Seven Mile Bridge. And there is the center of circulation that is aiming for Key West. Uh, eminent landfall here across the lower Florida Keys sometime around 3 p.m. After this clears out, things will improve for Dayton Broward for a few hours, but there is more on the southern side. We are going to get some of those feeder bands starting to move in later on. As this clears out, again, it'll dry out, but there's more in store as we move in through the early evening hours. Still, a lot of heavy rain right now across Miami-Dade, in through Broward County, uh, squally weather over at northeastern Broward. This is moving now across the sawgrass and in through US-27, I-75. Like I said, over the next hour or two, the best thing to do is to stay home nice and dry. Don't venture out in the streets. As of 11 a.m., 65 mile per hour winds moving west-northwest at 18, 80 miles southeast of Key West, Florida. The wind has been an issue today. 36 mile per hour wind gusts at Fort Lauderdale, 37 in Marathon. Right now, Key West is now reporting 28 mile per hour wind gusts at West Palm. Uh, the uh, local readings, Pompano Beach with 36, Miccosukee well inland, a 44 mile per hour wind gust and uh, 30 in Hialeah. Let's check out the buoy data, live streaming coming in, 32 mile per hour wind gust at Virginia Key, 38 at Fowey Rock, across the Upper Keys, 43 at Molasses Reef, Long Key 29, Vaca Key, which is right there by Marathon 32, and just offshore Sombrero Key, a reading of 36 miles per hour. As we know, the system is aiming for Key West. The entire area shaded here in red is under a hurricane warning. We could get some gusts strong enough to reach that hurricane threshold. That's why everyone here is under that advisory. Throughout the rest of the state in green and blue, tropical storm warnings and watches. So we know where it is headed, aiming for the lower Florida Keys. The question is if it's going to reach Category 1 status. Right now, there's only about a 10 mile per hour difference. Regardless, it's going to be a strong storm or a weak hurricane. The damage will be just the same. The question down the road is, will it get any stronger? Right now, the wind field is pretty big. Those tropical storm force winds extend all the way out through Palm Beach. That's what we will be dealing with as the system makes its way into the Gulf of Mexico. By tonight, it appears that it could be a Category 1 system and still uh, those uh, winds, tropical storm force winds impacting South Florida. Here is the uh, long range forecast and it looks now like it may intensify a little bit. Category 2 by the time it nears New Orleans, Louisiana by the middle of next week. All right, it looks like we do have a press conference uh, right now taking place. 
Oh, all right. Thank you. It looks like we're going now to the National Hurricane Center with James Franklin, one of their forecasters there, to give us a better idea as to what is happening with the system right now as it is approaching the Keys. Uh, it looks like we may get landfall here within the next few hours. What can you tell us? Uh, well, we have a reconnaissance aircraft uh, in there now. They, they made a, a fix through the center uh, about an hour ago. The pressure had risen a little bit. That means it's not strengthening. It's not getting better organized. See on the radar, it's still not a, a very well-defined structure. You can see the center there. But uh, So Isaac is running out of time to become a hurricane before uh, its impacts uh, move through. That doesn't mean that the hazards are gone. There's not very much difference between a high-end tropical storm and a low-end hurricane. But we think at this point it's going to be a tropical storm, not a hurricane. And James, plenty of rain, gusty winds across Miami-Dade and Broward counties as well. How long will that last? Uh, well, uh, you can't see it very well on here, but there's a long band of rain that's uh, well to the north that's going to be affecting Dade uh, and Broward Palm Beach counties uh, for many hours throughout the day. There may be a little bit of a breakdown here as this band goes through the Keys, uh, but it's going to take uh, really all day of uh, today and into tomorrow before all of this clears out. How about wind speeds? Uh, we've seen some uh, reports as strong as 40, 50 miles per hour. Will that be sustained throughout the afternoon? Uh, it's going to come and it's going to come and go. Uh, when you're in one of these rain bands, that's when some of the strong winds uh, get brought down to the surface that are that are aloft. Uh, I've seen some reports of 60 mile per hour gusts. Uh, we'll probably continue to see that, not on a consistent basis, but but only in spots. All right. Most importantly, for the folks in the Keys listening to us or watching us right now, what can you tell them? Just, just wait it out. I think we're going to be fortunate not to get a hurricane, uh, but it's still some very hazardous weather there, and, and they just need to wait it out. All right. Thank you very much, James Franklin from the National Hurricane Center, giving us a better idea of what to expect here, especially for the Keys in the hours to come. All right, let's uh, send it back now to the Yankers. And not so fast, Phil, real quick before we let you, 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 you step away from the weather wall there, walk us through, um, and I know you've done this a few times over the last several hours, but for people maybe just now tuning in, walk us through what we expect condition-wise over the next several hours. I know when we, when we left you last night, we were talking about the, the effects Hold that thought. I have a question for Phil, but we'll get to that in a second. I think right now we want to check in uh, in Doral, where Miami-Dade County officials are at the Emergency Operations Center. There it looks like a Mayor Carlos Jimenez yes. may be getting ready to speak. Perhaps uh, they're making some introductions there. And uh, got some of the county commissioners up there. Oh, yeah, no, that's, uh, that is Good afternoon, Hall, everybody. Downtown. Looks so like they're getting ready again. to address the media. Uh, this afternoon, and, to uh, press conference. So uh, you will hear from... Mayor Carlos Jimenez, he will go ahead and speak in English first, take questions in English, and then he'll go to Spanish. Also with us today is the chair of the Public Safety Committee, uh, Jose Pepe Diaz, uh, vice chairwoman of the uh, Board of County Commissioners, Audrey Edmonton, and also Commissioners Dennis Moss, Commissioner Bruno Barreiro, Commissioner Rebecca Sosa, and I think